What is up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new VR slash 360 camera that was just added to Cine Designer. And if you caught the Instagram video or Twitter video, we did a little bit of a demo of it. And this will allow you to actually preview in VR what a 360 camera would look like. And that's all thanks to Cine Designer, physical R19, R19 only, and of course for Redshift. So here's a quick demo before we get right into it. This is the new Nokia Ozo up here. I'm gonna turn, it's one setting that it has to hide and render so you don't actually see the camera. And we're gonna lock this view and we're of course in Redshift for this first part, but we'll also look at it, look at it inside of a physical renderer. And we have it now on a Chapman dolly and we can change the height of the camera here, like we were gonna rig it. And you can see over here what a preview of the render looks like. So if you've ever worked in 360, this is what's called a lat long. And if you render this out, you can view it in 360 on Facebook. You could make it into a 360 video for YouTube or Facebook. And you could also view it in the appropriate VR 360 um, app for your Oculus Rift or Vive. And probably Gear VR and a whole bunch of other things. But so the way that this works is inside of this Redshift camera that we just put out is a Redshift spherical camera. So you don't have to set anything up. You just have to use the Ozo and it'll give you a nice visualization of it here. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that your renders will take a little bit longer because if you can imagine you're rendering a full 360 of the world. So lighting takes a little bit longer. I think the one thing to keep in mind here as we let this load back up again, uh, it's preparing the scene. The only setting that I've exposed for now is, uh, is this, is show and render. And that's because if you are rendering through the actual camera, you want to turn that off. But if, you know, if you're trying to render like a behind the scenes view for the client or for anyone else, you'd be like, okay, you know, this is where the, this is where the VR camera is. You're going to make a view like this. Then you want to click show and render. And then you can see the Ozo there. So you could render this out and you could show everyone and be like, this is how far the camera is, etc. Uh, I'm going to pause the render here. Uh, as far as render settings, it's all the same thing for Redshift, but you tend to want to do resolutions that are two by one in most cases. Uh, it depends on what your final VR format is going to be, but in general, two by one works really well. And they usually want to be pretty high resolution. So this scene, two or 6,000 by 3,000, I don't believe I have the render anymore. It took me two minutes to render it. And that's the power of Redshift. With physical render, it's going to take a lot longer. But that's basically how we use it here. It's like any other camera. It just has one option, show or hide and render, depending on how you want to use it. And go ahead and render some VR uh, renders. So I'm going to save this and we're going to start a new scene. I'm going to go back to a more standard layout. And let's go get, uh, let's go do this for physical renderer. So we're in physical, the physical library here. And I'm going to go down to my Nokia Ozo. And there it is. It's uh, it's pretty much the same deal. You just have to render a little bit differently, of course. So we're going to pick it up a little bit. And let's go to physical. And I think we'll go to progressive. And we'll do GI. And we'll do QMC and light mapping. Pretty standard. I'm actually going to go put the quality to low again so this goes faster. And like I said before, let's make this 2 by one So we'll do 2,000 by 1,000. And that's a pretty big render. That's a pretty big render, but you'll see with with VR, if you've never worked in it for video, if you've never worked in it for um, for 3D either, that VR, you're only, it's a, you're rendering the whole 360, but you're only viewing a tiny portion of it. So you're actually kind of like effectively zooming in a lot on your footage. So you end up having to render at really high levels of resolution to have it look like anything decent. And again, uh, physical renderer is going to be much, much slower for this process, but it will work. It will 100% work just the same way. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go get a preview window, which you can do the same thing in Redshift. And we're going to look through the actual camera. And this will tell you which way the camera is facing forward, but it won't give you a very good uh, idea of what the field of view is. But you can kind of gauge the height. And we'll, we'll look at that in a second. So what I would recommend if you're using physical renderer is try not to get into like fancy lighting uh, if you can. 
just really try to stick to something very simple. So we're going to call this uh, ambient. And we're just going to put like, a really bright white dome around everything. And this is the floor. And I'm not even going to do reflectance for it. So I would do simple scenes like this if you if this is going to work for you. You know, for your scene. And then just try to keep it really simple because physical render is a little bit slow. So let's go grab some stuff here. Uh, yeah, let's do that. That's fun. This one. This one. Yeah, how about, how about a bunch of these? These are all scans from, from Set Designer, of course. And we'll just build a really weird VR scene really quickly. And... So this is going to work really great to be able to block out um, a VR scene that you're going to go shoot in reality. But at the same time, as you might start to notice with all things Cine Designer, is that the quality that we're producing at is quite high. And you could also just start producing VR content directly from Cinema 4D and Cine Designer. We haven't really started to cover that very much uh, on this YouTube channel or anywhere really, but... That is, that is the truth. So here's our little VR scene. And say this was the shoot you were going to do. We don't have a tripod in this case, so maybe I'll go add a quick tripod. I think that is a big part of the value of Cine Designer is that it has all of these things built in. And you build it just like you'd build any other rig. Nokia Oza at the bottom. And that doesn't look very good. Just like this. Great. So now we have a little bit of a tool to kind of show how high it is. And you do end up rigging 360 cameras to conventional things like that, so that works out pretty well, I think. Let's bring this in to about here. And if this was your shoot and you were shooting with an Ozo or a Jaunt or really any 360 camera, you could now preview based on these distances what this might look like. So let's make sure that we're rendering out of here. We're using our Nokia Ozo, which is what this is, right? Yep. Uh, C4D Cam Spherical is what its name is here. We'll do 2,000 by 1,000. All these settings should be fine. I'm actually just going to pull out uh, the subdivision surface stuff. Or what was that subsurface? So let's render this at 2,000 by 1,000 and see how long it takes to render. Not too bad. And again, I would recommend just using a sky object with some with a bright color on it and just do some like really simple flat lighting. This looks like it kind of stopped rendering. Oh, no, there it goes. Oh, it's in progressive, too. So, oh, that's pretty good for a progressive pass right there. So this is 30 seconds into a progressive pass. And, yeah, you could you could just hit pause and then send this out to your VR app of choice. And let me know in the comments below if you guys want me to dive into VR, different ways of viewing it. I did a video, a video on editing VR content a while back in Premiere, so maybe this is the channel to kind of dig into that stuff. So that's past... 13 already so great hit pause that looks pretty good so again if you keep the lighting simple like this and there's not a lot of bouncing happening you're gonna do fine with render times big open scenes like this if you took this into like an interior with light coming through a window and you're doing like uh really intense bouncing you this would take like forever but that is the general workflow for vr previs pretty much the same thing uh, if you use the Oza, which is our only rig at the moment, it will automatically render in VR that long. Uh, I do not expose... Actually, no, I guess I do. You can also render in parallel, which I guess I'll show what that looks like. Uh, you're going to have to know what you're doing to really want this, but what's happening here, and I don't believe this is the right resolution for parallel, but what this is doing is it's doing stereo. So now it's it's basically approximating if there were two cameras that were... Uh, 6.5 centimeters apart, like the distance between your eyes, it's going to render the left eye on the top and the right eye on the bottom. And if you view this on like YouTube set up for stereo VR or any player that's set up for stereo VR, stereo 360, it would appear in three dimensions. Though there aren't that many, there aren't that many places that really do it correctly or well. So in general, I would stay in mono for physical. I wouldn't go to I wouldn't go to stereo unless you really know what you're talking about, in which case you may not want to use my rig. Uh, and the same thing goes here as we... I'm going to just turn that off. So that's a stereo left eye, right eye. I'm going to go back to the Ozo here, mono. And just to kind of end this up, I'm going to say show and render because it was off before. And we're going to render from here and do our like kind of behind the, 
behind the scenes shot of this as well. But you need to turn back on show and render or else the, the Ozo itself won't show up. So that is the VR previs workflow. And it's pretty fun. I know it's kind of niche because not everyone's doing VR production or 360 production. And I know that not everybody is prevising their 360 production, but this is really powerful. And we can also just start straight up producing VR content with it. Pictures are really easy. You can start doing animation with motion capture. You can, well, we can't do it yet because we haven't made it yet, but um, we can import a lot of the same VR type content into Unreal Engine and do all sorts of things. But that is the VR previs workflow for physical and for Redshift. They're pretty much identical. There's not a huge difference. This one just has some different modes that um, I didn't expose for the Redshift version. Let me know if you have any comments about this. I'd love to see your VR renders. Post them on Facebook. You have to know how to do that and inject the metadata and stuff. But um, that's for a different video probably. But hope you guys enjoyed this. And yeah, again, let me know if you have any questions about the 360 VR workflow within Cinema 4D and Cine Designer. And I'll see you guys on the next video.